In this tutorial, we're going to show you how you can import vectors and calculate the vCarbon toolpath to cut the bull's head sign that you can see here. We're also going to show you how you can make edits to the original design and recalculate the toolpath until we like the look of the toolpath preview. So let's just go ahead and we'll go to File, Close. So we're going to start by opening an existing file. So we're going to click on this icon here and in our project folder, we're going to open the bullshead.dxf file. And this is a vector file that has been created in another drawing program. And so the software automatically sets the job size to the size of the largest object within the imported file. What we want to do is we want to make this a little bit bigger so that we have space to cut around the job and we've got uh, space to hold the part in place also. So we can edit the size of this by going into the job setup form, which is automatically opened when we open up the vector file. So here we're going to stick to a single sided job. For the width, we're going to change that from 10.39 and we're going to change that to 12 inches wide. And we're going to change the height of this so that it's five inches high. And you can see that it's added height to the top and it's added some width over here to the right hand side and that's down to the XY datum position that we've got set here where it's set to the lower left and we're going to come back to this section in a moment. Okay so we're going back up the form we are working in inches and we're setting that to a material thickness of a quarter of an inch. The Z0 position, so we're going to set that to the material surface. And this is the position that we're going to reference on the CNC machine with the tip of the tool to tell the software that this is zero. And because we're vCarving, we want to choose the material surface. It's the best plane to reference from when doing something like a vCarve toolpath. And we can see that's indicated by this red dot on this graphic here. Moving on down, we have the X, Y datum position or the X zero, Y zero position. Now, when we open a vector file like this, the software will automatically try to position it relative to the coordinates that it was saved from in the original file. And so it does that by using this offset value to move the X, Y zero position in place. And we can see that judging by the rules that we've got right here. Now, if I don't need to keep that original location, then we can basically uncheck this. And then you can see that the X, Y zero has been moved over to the lower left hand corner indicated by the square and we've got the two rules here at zero and so we know now that everything is going to be positive going up the y axis and everything will be positive going across the x axis over here. Next in the form, we have the option to scale the design with the job size. We don't need to do this, so I'm not worried about that. Modeling resolution is only applicable to 3D data. We're not touching 3D data in this tutorial, so this isn't relevant here. And then we have the option to select our material settings, and we're going to look at this option within the toolpath preview form. So we'll come back to that later. And then we could go ahead and press OK. Okay, so there we've imported that file, set up the job and everything is set from the lower left hand corner. I want to move everything that we've got here, so all of the vectors, I want to position them into the center of our job. And so we can do this by selecting all of our vectors and then aligning it to the center of our material. So let's have a look at a couple of ways that we can select all of our vectors. Probably the easiest way is to just click and drag a box around the area you want to include in your selection. And I'm using the left mouse key here. And when I let go, you'll see that all of the vectors are highlighted. It's telling us that they are currently selected. Another way is to go to edit and then go to selection and select all vectors like so. And the shortcut key for that is control followed by the letter A and that will select all of your vectors within your job.
So with them selected, we can then come over to the Transform Objects section of the Drawing tab and use this option here to align selected objects. And then what we can do is we can look at aligning them to the center and to the center vertically and horizontally to our material. And if we click on that, you can see it's positioned that there for us. And then we can simply go ahead and press close. Now, I would like to make some further edits to the design for this sign, but we'll come back to this shortly, as I'd like to show you just how quickly we can create a toolpath for this part. So if your vectors are the correct size and in the correct position as you want them to, then we can just simply use this option here to switch over to our toolpaths tab. That will temporarily hide our design tab. And then over on the right, you can see it's opened up all of the options in order for us to create toolpaths from those vectors. So the first and most important thing that we need to do, and that is setting up our material. And this is where we relate our virtual setup with that of our physical setup of the actual material being laid down on your CNC bed. And so we're going to look at this section up here. So you can see we have two graphics here, and this is just really for us to just glance at to ensure that everything is safe and appropriate, whereby we can see where our Z0 is set to the top of our material here. We can see the material thickness demonstrated by this graphic here at a quarter of an inch. We can see we've got safe Z gaps of 0 0.2 and we've got our XY position in the lower left hand corner and you can see our home and start position. And you want to check over all of that to make sure that it's safe and appropriate for your particular setup. Now, in this case, as we are a beginner using this software, it's best to get into the habit of using the set option to really just go through the form. So you can see at the moment, we're currently on the sheet one, which is our active sheets, the only sheet that we have been working on here. That's why we're seeing that displayed there. Uh, the material thickness is at a quarter of an inch. Our XY datum position, we're setting that to the lower left hand corner here. And again, you can see that indicated by the graphic over on the left here. Our Z0 position, we're going to be setting that to the material surface. And again, you can see that's indicated by this red dot on top of our material surface here. Next up, we've got the model position in material section. Now, this is only applicable if you have 3D models within your job, as we don't, none of this is relevant to us right now. So we don't need to worry about any of that information here. And you need to check over your rapid Z gaps above the material. So these are values that are used for the tool to retract to before it moves to the next position in the toolpath. And it's important to ensure um, that these values are high enough that they'll clear any kind of clamping or hold down method that you may be using. So we're going to leave those at point two in this case. And then we've got the home and start position. And this is just a value that we can enter in here to give the software a location to move the tool to before we start the cut, in which case we're going to put that 0, 0 with a Z gap above the material of 0 0.8. But as I said, you should check over everything, ensuring it's safe and appropriate for your own setup. So then we'll just go ahead here and then we'll press OK. So the toolpath that we're going to use for these vectors is the VCAF toolpath. And that can be found under the toolpath operations section of the toolpaths tab. And it's this icon here. And if we click on that, that will open up the VCAF engraving toolpath. So first off, we need to specify our cut depths. So we're going to specify our start depth. Now we want to start that on the top of our material surface at zero. So we're going to leave that set to zero. And in terms of machining this, the tool is going to go down as deep as it can get all the way to the point of the tool. And that all depends on the width of the vectors and the angle of the tool that we're going to use. 
And so to select a tool, we use the select option here and that's going to open up your tool database. And this is our library of tools where we have a standard default set. Other tool settings are appropriate for hardwood in this case to use on my desktop CNC machine. And you have the ability to edit and create new tools as well as having the ability to create a new tool set for different materials and machines that you may be running. And you can learn more about this within the tool database guide. In this case, I'd like to use the 90 degree half inch V bit here you want to check over the settings, ensuring they're safe and appropriate for your particular material and the machine that you are using. And then to apply that, we can simply use the select option. We have further options in the form that are greyed out, and that's because we don't have the flat depth option checked. So moving all the way down to the bottom of the form, we can simply go ahead and then give that a name. So in this case, we could say VCARV90, so I know in my head to use a 90 degree V bit there. And then we could go ahead and press calculate. And you can see that the software's calculated that extremely quickly. It's opened up the toolpath preview form. We're able to see and visualize our toolpaths here in the 3D view. So this toolpath has been drawn for us here in the 3D view, and this literally represents the coordinates that the software is going to tell the tool to move to in order to carve out this sign. And this is very useful for me to see the actual paths here, but it's more useful for me to visualize the actual cutout simulation. And that's what this preview function is for over on the right hand side. So first off, we can select our material. And if we go to sheet one and click on the palette here, we can see we're currently looking at a Canadian maple material, which we can see that there in the 3D view. And if we wanted to, we could choose a different material from the drop down list that's automatically uh, sat within your software. But if there was something that you didn't have, for instance, and you'd seen a bitmap of a material that you did like the look of, you can look at adding in a new texture to the relevant um, subject matter. For example, we've got metals, stones, woods, um, and so on. You can add in your own um, sections as well. So for something like this, let's say I'm actually going to machine this into cherry. So I'm going to use the cherry option and you can see it's updated that there for us. And it just helps us get a better idea of how that part is going to be machined according to the material that we are actually using. And then we can go ahead and preview this toolpath. So we can use the draw tool option and select that so we can actually see the tool as it's virtually cutting out our material block here. And so to preview that, we can use the preview selected toolpath option. Just to start off, I'm just gonna really slow the speed down here so that you can see the part exactly how it moves. And this can be very useful to see the moves in the software first before actually uh, creating the part on the CNC. So here we can go ahead and preview that toolpath and we can see exactly how that's going to be machined. And if we wanted to, we could look at increasing the speed there and then we can put it pretty much to maximum so we can see how that looks. And so here we can see the exact shape and cut that we're going to get on our CNC machine. And this is so important. If I think that this looks right here at this stage, then I can go away with confidence, save out those toolpaths and know it should look like this if I set up everything correctly on the CNC. So if something doesn't look quite right at this stage, I also have the option to fix it before wasting any time or material in cutting this part. So it's always vital that you check over your toolpath preview. So one nice thing that we can do is we could look at adding color to our toolpath preview. For example, let's say I wanted to create an effect that uh, all of the cutaways is actually gilded. Then what we could do is we could come over to the global fill color 
And you can see it's also automatically picked up the last color I've used. But let's say we want to change that to a gold and we can see what that looks like here. And so as well as this preview being useful for me, I can actually use this as a marketing aid where I can save out the preview as an image, so a JPEG or a variety of different image files. And I can send that to my customer as a proof. And I can even use this for images in a portfolio or I can put them on my website and ultimately show people the capabilities that we have with a CNC. So to do that, we can simply go on to save preview image and then we can just simply give that a name. So we could just call this one bull's head and then we can save that as a BMP, a JPEG, a PNG or a GIF. In which case we'll just go with um, the BMP and we can just save that there. So even though we are explaining the steps to create this sign in a lot of detail, you can see how quickly it is to open the vector file, alter the job setup, select all of the vectors and center them in our job. Uh, take those vectors, switch over to the toolpaths tab, double checking our material setup, creating the toolpath, calculating it and then previewing it here. And we could have in theory have got this to, to this stage within one minute of starting. So now I want to show you how you would save this data into a format that your CNC machine would understand. So we're just going to switch on the visibility of our VCarve toolpath and then we're going to go over to this icon here which enables us to save our toolpath and here we have various options for us to save our toolpaths out. In this case we only have one single toolpath so we're going to use this option here to save the selected toolpath and we can see that that VCarve toolpath is displayed here in the toolpaths to be saved list and we can see the actual tool that we've got selected there for it as well. So for demonstration purposes we're going to save that to our desktop machine that uses the post processor G-code Arx inches. And you'll need to ensure that your machine and the post processors for that machine are used here. And you can learn more about machine configuration and saving toolpaths in the related videos section for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and use the save toolpaths option. So here you'll see that the file name is taken from the name of the toolpath and you can change that if you wanted to. In this case, I'm just going to leave that. We can see that, that is a .tap file and then I can then save that and I can take that .tap file over to my CNC machine to run that project and cut this bull's head sign out. So here we've seen the whole process from starting with the vectors to something that you can machine. So let's just close out of the save toolpaths form. We'll just undraw the visibility of their toolpaths there. So now I'd like to show you how we can make edits to the vectors that we've got here. So let's just go to our 2D view. And if we just press F to fit that to our screen, we're just going to look at making edits to the border shape. So let's just go and switch over to the drawing tab. So that's opened up the drawing tab now. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to look at selecting the inner border and to take that and I'm just going to delete it. And then what we can do is we can select that outer vector and then we can take a look at what we've got here. So straight away at the bottom we can see we have a width of 10.3937 by 3.8583. So I'm just going to round this up slightly. So to edit the shape of this rectangle we can press E on the keyboard to open up the draw rectangle tool or with that selected we could just simply go into the draw rectangle tool. So various different options to go into different forms when you've got those vectors selected. So here what we're going to do is we're just going to look at altering this vector ever so slightly. So we're going to look at giving that a width of 11 inches and a height of 4 inches in this case. And then we might as well just alter the corners whilst we're here and make them a little bit more decorative. We have the option to apply a radius external corner 
and we could pop that in as 0.5 in here just press apply to see what that looks like or we could do a radius internal corner so this is kind of very traditional of sign work so we'll have a nice uh, radius internal corner for this shape and you can see the effect of that there so I'm happy with uh, the shape that we've got there so we can just simply close out. And with that vector selected, what we need to do is create an offset. So we wanna create an offset where we're essentially offsetting the vector but creating a copy where we can offset by a certain amount. For example, we could try that at point two. So with that vector selected, we can come over to our offset tool and you can see here we can offset outwards inwards and both. In this case we're going to go inwards and we want to offset that inwards by 0 0.2 in this case where we want to create sharp offset corners. We want to select the new one as the new vector so we could go ahead and press offset and you can see the result of that there as well. So that looks pretty good. So there are lots of tools that we can use to create shapes, edit shapes, uh, where we have a set of very powerful design tools to create our vectors from scratch or edit existing artwork. So now that we've made edits to our design, let's have a look at how we can recalculate our toolpath to accommodate those changes. So we're just going to switch back over to the toolpaths tab. We're just going to open up the original toolpath by double clicking on the VCarve 90 from the toolpath list. Okay, so you can see it's pulled out the vectors that we used before. So this vector, we have actually just edited that by just altering the size and we changed the corner types. And then obviously, originally we had another border vector which we deleted, if you'll remember rightly at the start. So what we need to do is we need to include this vector as part of our selection for us to recalculate this toolpath by simply selecting the shift and then selecting that extra vector there. And then it's simply a case of just saying calculate and then we can reset that preview and then go ahead and preview this toolpath to see how it looks like in the new design. Okay, so I really like the new border that we've got there and I think judging by our simulation that's going to carve really nicely. Now looking at the actual text itself, the bull's head text, we know it's in the centre but it almost looks as though it's over to the right hand side and that's probably to do with this decorative B shape that we've got over here. So sometimes the mathematical centre doesn't always mean it will look visually correct. So we can look at manually just editing the position of the text within the sign. So here we'll just close out and we'll go over to the 2D view and switch over to the drawing tab. So I just want to select the internal vector. So I'm just going to draw a box just around those vectors there. You can see it's just those that are selected. And then what I can do is I could look at moving them. So I could use the arrow keys if I wanted to, or we could look at doing more of a an exact movement position. And we can do that by using this option here to move selected objects. And let's say we wanted to move that relative to its current position and we wanted to move that relative in the x-axis but going to the left we would put in negative 0 0.25 in there and we could go ahead and press apply and you can see that's moved that over and you can see now that actually appears more uh, central to the rest of the sign. Another thing that we can do is we could look at altering the size of that text. Okay, so I haven't quite grabbed the outer vector here, so I can hold down shift and select it to make that part of my selection. And so if we select our vectors again, it will put it into transform mode. So we can see we've got these handles, so now we're able to stretch it, we can size it, we can rotate it and really transform the shape of this selection here. 
So in this case, what we are going to do is we're just going to look at uh, making this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to hover over a corner and I'm going to hold down shift. And that's just going to enable me to scale this in proportion as I drag my mouse across. And I'm going to click with my left mouse key. I'm just going to move that ever so slightly outwards. So it was just making it a tiny bit bigger, so nothing too drastic. And really, this is all very um, subjective, uh, but we're just showing you the tools or the things that you need to use or what, what you could do to change the design should you ever come across anything like this. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with what we've got here. So what we need to do now is just look at um, updating our VCAF toolpath. So we can switch over to the toolpaths tab. So earlier I showed you how we can simply click, double click on the toolpath in the toolpath list to edit that toolpath. We can also use this option here to edit the toolpath. We can see that all of our vectors are already selected. Those are the vectors that we did use previously. All we've done is just altered the size and we've moved some of those around. So we can simply go ahead here and press calculate. Okay, so we've still got the preview up from last time. So we can just reset that preview and then go ahead and then preview uh, the updated toolpath. So that looks pretty good. So it's very important that your part looks correct at this stage. As you've seen, we've made several iterations to this part and we've previewed those changes until we like the look of the preview. Now the toolpath preview shows you an accurate representation of what we would see on our CNC machine if we was to go ahead and run these toolpaths. So if something doesn't look as you wanted it here at this stage, you can, as you've seen throughout this example, go back and make edits to the vectors or the toolpaths and recalculate them until you are satisfied with the results that you see here in the toolpath preview. And that's what makes this preview such a powerful tool. So then we can close out of the preview toolpaths form and then we'd simply go and save the updated toolpath as you saw earlier. So that really completes this tutorial. So we'll just go ahead and save the file. So go to file, save as, and in the project folder, we're going to call this one bullshead.crv and you can access that from the project folder.